Here we go. Let's see what it looks like inside. This is what it looks like out of the box. Brand new. And you should experience the exact same. If you don't have this wrapped up, you probably got a used unit. Okay, so having the unboxing experience be genuine, real, authentic, unscripted, live gives you something to compare what you order to because you should have exactly the same thing packaged exactly the same way for the same price uh, if you're ordering it you know if you're inspired by checking it out yourself and if anything doesn't match up that's a big red flag what's under here nothing we have a little box we have another little box so this box contains our power of brick right there. I'm not a big fan of this style of power brick, but at this price point, you can't really complain. My issue with these is because they're so wide, they can take up plugs, neighboring plugs on a power strip. And then the limitation of length, these are usually a little bit short for me. I'll demonstrate right now where basically the fix for this is you get an extension cord. But for me to be able to run the power cable from here down to the surge protector to the floor <clears throat> i much prefer where there's two cables one that comes from the wall into the adapter one that comes out of the adapter into the machine that gives you a bit more uh, uh, length of cable to plug in especially if you've got to go behind a desk and around something these cables are often too short let's see what we've got here yeah i mean that's not exactly what is that about five feet maybe I don't know what my wingspan is, but let's see if it'll reach. I'm going to plug this in. Down here is my surge protector. And, you know, that's the end of my cable. So I can't even get to the end of the desk. So as long as I move this over to the left here, it'll reach. But for that reason, not a fan of that design. However, we've got to keep in mind our price and see what we've got going on. So right click on the start button. We'll go to system. And we have Windows 10. Is that right? Windows 10? Look at that. I wasn't expecting Windows 10. I was expecting Windows 11. But you know what? I didn't even read the descriptor on the Amazon page. Windows 10 will expire October 14th of this year. So that does explain why the price is so aggressive. But bear in mind, the Windows 11 is a free upgrade, so there's no cost, provided our CPU is on the compatibility list. Let's take a quick look. We're looking for the Ryzen 5. Yes, that is a supported CPU. So what we'll do, we'll go back to our browser. We'll type in download Windows 11. And one of the first links that pops up should be Microsoft, right up here, Microsoft.com. And second one down says download Windows 11. We don't want to download it from anybody but Microsoft. So make sure you're at Microsoft.com. And we want the installation assistant. So we're going to download that. This is a very quick download. It's a small program. And we're going to execute that product or that software. And it's going to tell us if we're ready for Windows 11. And this is going to be 24H2. So, so we can skip over all the prior versions of Windows 11 and any updates to Windows 10, we can just go right to Windows 11 24H2. Let's uh, say, okay, so this says we've got to use another app called the PC Health Check app. And based on the results of that app, then the Windows 11 installation assistant knows if it's safe to go forward. This is an even smaller program. You just click, we get that download real quick right up here, open that up, accept the license agreement, hit install. And in just a second, that will install. It says we're getting things ready for you. Again, it's very small. It's got the box to open the PC health check as soon as we hit finish. And we can close all these other windows because they're just distracting. So we're going to check now. This PC meets Windows 11 requirements. So we are good to go for Windows 11 on this, despite the fact 
It was not pre-installed with Windows 11. It is a free upgrade. So I hit the refresh button now on the Windows 11 installation assistant. It now gets the okay from the PC health check. And there's your license agreement. Accept it and install. And that's it. Now, this could take an hour. Could take longer than an hour. Could take less than an hour. I'm just saying an hour as an average. Okay, our Windows 11 24H2 is concluded. Let me close out camera one and let's go full screen on camera two. And let's take another look at the device manager and let's see if everything's still happy. Still happy. I will absolutely need my glasses for this, but this should just take minutes to demonstrate. It should be that easy. And again, this isn't really designed to be upgradable. At the end of the day, you're never going to change this processor. It's soldered to the motherboard, as all portable chips are. You cannot change that chip. And the chip is always going to be your bottleneck on a system like this. You can throw all the RAM and storage you want in it. It's not really going to go much faster. Maybe you'll see a difference with the RAM, but if you really need that much power, you probably shouldn't be buying this level of computer. The idea that you're going to save money, it's the opposite. You're going to spend more, I promise you. It'll cost you more to upgrade this than if you just bought it with what you wanted out of the gate and spent a little bit more for the larger storage or more RAM. They do sell other versions, or there are competitors that sell other versions that are better equipped. Don't buy something under your need and then turn around and think, well, the first thing I'm going to do when it arrives is I'm going to open it up and upgrade it. That's... You don't even know if the computer you got works. So now you've upgraded it and it doesn't work. Is that because your upgrade is causing it to fail or it just arrived broken? You don't know. So you absolutely want to leave this sealed and use it to make sure that you're confident everything works good. So then you upgrade it and if anything changes, you know you're the one who caused it. Something has locked us in right there. And it's so strong, if that's a clip, it's a very well-made clip. Because, I mean, this thing is not budging. It feels more like it's secured with a screw. So let's say there's a clip holding this in, and that clip is right here. What you need to do is get your spudging tool in the seam and pull this big piece, pull it away. I don't know how well I can demonstrate this, but let's go somewhere where we're locked in like right here and instead of twisting this because that's a great way to break the plastic clip we know that there's going to be a clip on this cover and somewhere on the walls of the unit that's holding it in place so we want to separate the wall by pulling it away instead of twisting it pull it away and you'll see with a little bit of pressure not too much pressure because we don't want this to pull off suddenly and rip any Wi-Fi antennas that may be attached to the bottom. So you see here, it doesn't want to come off. So there's a clip, and it's somewhere in the middle here. And if I can find an open edge and just bend the screwdriver, or bend the spudging tool, oh, bending this plastic away, that freed us up from those clips. What's interesting is it, there are four screws in here and a two and a half inch SATA drive mount right there. So those small screws, they're for a mechanical or SSD SATA drive. And inside, this is actually very well equipped. Everything looks like it's user serviceable. This is the SATA data and power cable that you would be attaching if you wanted to put a mechanical or a solid state two and a half inch drive in the lid. Well, you'd be trapping more heat in here, and I think you'd be foolish to do it. You can do it. They do give you the cable. That's what that's for. And I cannot strongly emphasize and recommend enough, you do not do this, because you're going to trap more heat. There's no fan in here. That's going to make your RAM run hotter and your storage run hotter. This is your NVMe drive, and your RAM does have a second channel, so upgrading the RAM is super easy. Some of the uh, lower-end Intel, like the N-Series, are only going to have single-channel support. On the AMDs, though, you see we've got dual-channel support there, so that's nice to see. But you're still going to be limited to about 32 gigs on the lower-end chips. 
Again, you can replace this, but there's no heat sink on it. So if you try and replace it with something too fast, you'll just quickly overheat is what you'll do. So if you're going to stay with a, a larger capacity drive, I would advise you to go middling on the performance side of things because there's no heat sink and there's no fan in here. Now underneath that is our Wi-Fi card right under there. This is our BIOS battery that plugs into the board here. And that's all she wrote. Like you couldn't ask for it to be more serviceable. Very easy to access. The hard part are these, these are the clips I was fighting with right down here. There's one right there. Looks like another one right there. And they're on all four sides. So again, what I was doing was bending this away, separating those clips from the lid. I can't emphasize that enough because I instinctively I want to twist the screwdriver to separate and that'll just break these clips. So overall, I'm impressed. I think for the price, can't be beat. That'll wrap it up for me for today. Thank you so much. I'll see you again very, very soon. Until next time, bye for now.